In this week's video, we'll be discussing springboard errors, white space, as well as public versus private API. I'd first like to give a shout out to Idle Hands, who had an amazing discussion on the discussion forums about pointers. Feel free to check out video six in the search bar in the discussion forum if you'd like to learn more about pointers. So to start with, one of the questions we had was, what about white space? And specifically, where can I put my pointer when I declare a variable? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly de declare an NS string variable. We can say string one is equal to hello. And we'll print this out just to make sure that this works. So I can run this and we see in this case, well, we actually get a fail here. Uh, I used the wrong NS log. So be careful here, make sure to use a capital. And in this case, we'll be able to see hello will print out to our console once our simulator launches up. So we know now that our pointer, when it's attached to our variable, works. Now, what happens if I switch it and do it this way instead? Well, we also see that hello works. So both ways work. And in fact, I can put another space here and we see that this in fact even works. So Xcode is screen, white space blank, which means that we can add as many spaces as we want in between these elements and it all works properly. However, I can't add a space in the middle of my variable name because that changes the name of my variable. But in between my equal sign, I could add as many spaces or as few spaces as I wanted to as well. And this would also be valid. Spaces are more stylistic in terms of arranging our code, so it's much easier to read. So if we consistently always put our character stars next to our variable names, it becomes very easy to read all of our variables. The next thing we want to talk about is a little bit more on pointers. Now, someone brought up in the discussion forums that there was a pointer in our main.m file, and there's also a pointer here when we declare variables, and in a header file, like let's say I'm gonna return an NS array from this method, we'll also see a pointer inside of our parentheses. Well, what is the difference between all these pointers? In each case, it's a memory address or it points to a location in our heap. Here, we don't know what object have we returned yet unless we call this array and it returns some object, but what we're doing here is we're saying we have a pointer to an array object in the heap. In our main.m file, this is a C pointer, and we won't be using C pointers in this course, so we don't have to worry about this. However, all C programs start in our main.m file so this is some uh, C code that gets set up as part of our boilerplate code so we can get our application to work. So don't worry about this one for now. For our variable assignment string one, we say that string one points to the memory address where the object hello one is, hello is kept, right? The string hello has the characters hello inside of it. And what this is doing is string one does not in fact equal the object hello it merely points to some location in our memory where we're storing this object. And this is very efficient since we can have multiple pointers to the same object. The next thing we should learn about is public and private API. So I'm gonna create a new file so we can test this out. We're gonna go to iOS Cocoa Touch Objective-C class and let's make an MBF dog. And I can go ahead and press create. And what I'm going to do here is in my header file, I'm going to declare a method. So we're going to say, this is a public method. Now let's copy and paste this method into our .m file. And we can go ahead and write down a slog that says, this is a public method is being evaluated. So let's go into our OWViewController.m class and we'll create an instance of MBF dog in view did load. We can remove our previous NS log statement here. You know, I'll just comment it out so we can save that. And we'll do MBF dog 
dog is equal to mbf dog alloc in it. And we can say dog public, uh, what was the name of our method here? The name of our method was this is a public method. So we can call our method and we can run our program and we'll be able to see a log statement print out. And what this is doing for us is we're able to access this public method here and we have access to it inside of the OWViewController class when we imported the header file. So that means that it's public. Now we create private methods, and let's see how we can do that in mbfdog.m. So we can write void this is a private method, and I can nslog in here as well. You can say this is a private method is evaluating, is being evaluated. And let's go back to our OWViewController.m class and try to use it. So we can say dog, this is, oh, we don't have access to this method because it's private. We didn't declare it in our header file, so we do not have access to it in the OWViewController.m class. I do, however, have access to this as a private method inside of my MBF dog class. So I can use that functionality, say, in this is a public method, and we can call our method self this is a private method, and I'm going to go back to my view controller class and remove this attempt at calling that method, and we can run our application again. So we say is being evaluated, right, this is a private method, as well as this is a public method is being evaluated. So why do we bother creating public and private methods? Well, it's an organization thing as well as an art of programming thing. Sometimes we want to keep the internals of a class private to that class because, because to use our class, other classes don't need to know about this functionality. For example, if we do some initial setup inside of our view controller class, another class likely isn't going to need to know how we're setting up our view for our specific view controller. In this case, we don't need to make our method public, but we can organize bits of code together into private helper methods, which is what we do over and over inside of the pirate assignment. Speaking of the pirate assignment, I hope everyone's having a great time attempting the problem. And if you have any questions about this during the week, please feel free to post to the discussion forums, and we'll do the best we can to help you out. I noticed that some people have been waiting to use the solutions video, which is really awesome because custom solutions and then comparing it to the solution video will be really helpful in learning how object-oriented programming works. In the coming week, we're releasing the rest of the solutions as well as some new content on MVC. MVC will take up our foreseeable future and that stands for Model View Controller. So we're gonna learn about the design pattern for iOS, which will take quite a while. In it, we'll be introduced to things like table views and delegation. And there's a lot of really cool projects coming up. But for this week, work on finishing up the pirate assignment. And if you have time, start working through the MVC material. We'll have a bunch of challenges where you'll be able to apply the MVC design pattern in the following week's material. I hope everyone had a great week, and I hope everyone's looking forward to the next week. 